We are just sitting in, we're discussing the ongoing protests and the awakening of the Nigerian youth. And remember, you can join this conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Waste Your Africa One with the hashtag Waste, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 All right, so um, we have Esther on the line. Esther, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right, so quickly, can you just quickly run us through what is happening in Abuja and why you're still protesting on the streets? Because today we heard that... Um, uh, protest has been banned in Abuja, if this is correct. Um, we didn't have any official letter or anybody announcing during a press conference about banning of protests. So we moved on as usual. And the reason why we are still protesting is very, very simple. Anybody that is out there, anybody, any good Nigerian that is there will know that nothing has been done out of everything we've asked. And I don't think we are asking for too much. We know that some of the processes need time. It, it needs time for most of these things to be enacted. But still, we need proof. It's, it's very hard for us to believe that, um, yes, they've listened to us and SARS have been dissolved. When, um, why? Oh, sugar. I think we're having a bit of trouble with her network. But um, Ade is saying, good evening, ladies. Um, women abroad are in support of this protest. The hashtag issues that we are facing in the country and, uh, and affecting us in, is affecting us in the diaspora. The president can now see for himself to be surrounded with unfaithful advisors. Is that what he's saying? And this has led international leaders getting involved. It's a shame to the government. The government promised change during the campaign, but the change is only in their pockets while poor um, living conditions in uh, poor living, the poor are living in poverty. Then number five, he says in, di in the diaspora, um, Nigerians in the diaspora want to come home and build a great Nigeria, but you know, because of the restrictions and they are not able to, to build a better Nigeria. So, I mean, these things I think is just hovering around trust, trust, yeah. trust. Yeah, well, do you know what I said? I, I think you've seen that video that um, I don't know the name of the man that says, you know, when Nigeria wakes up, you know, Africa will wake up. Mm. Now, Patrick, um, one of the uh, now, African. There has never been a truer statement. And I say that every time. Well, imagine that Nigeria was a country that blacks, wherever they are, can return to. Imagine that Nigeria was a country like Singapore. This will reflect on how blacks are treated wherever in the world. If Africa, especially Nigeria, is respected, if we can, if people can come here and succeed, if we can sponsor businesses elsewhere, Uwa, the story about Black Lives Matter would change. Mm. Because right home here in Africa, in Nigeria, things can work. We can govern ourselves. We can produce things ourselves. And people, when you do honest work, when you govern yourself well, then the land will thrive. Wherever a black man is in this world, he will be respected mm -hmm. just the way you respect an American. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uti? Uti, uh, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. I mean, we've, we've said it, and I mean, AK just talked about the power of Nigeria. And I think there's a quote by um, Nelson Mandela that's going around um, about Nigeria being um, Nigeria being viewed in the right way or Africa not being viewed until Nigeria is seen in a certain way. I can't remember the exact quote. Mm -hmm. But Nigeria is in such a powerful position in Africa. And until we can rise to being the giant of Africa, we're not going to be able to take that place hand on heart. When I think about this whole situation and we keep talking about how we move it forward, all these reforms that we've called for, we must hold on to them and we must ensure that these reforms, but they will take time. And this is why we still need a collective to articulate and make sure that the government is held accountable. This is not a sprint by any measure. This is going to be a marathon. We are going to have huge and massive fights on our, in our, on our hands. And the challenge or what I want to call for, what for me is important, is I started to notice um, almost like a generational divide. And this is a fight for every single Nigerian. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the youth who are on the front lines of the protest, we can all do something in this fight. If we truly want this fight to be sustainable, if we really want to find this change, we can all do something. So us coming together and not allowing whatever divisions, whether it be um, youth, whether it be by generation, there's a video that's going around at the moment where they're calling for um, 
people who have donated money, I don't know if you guys have seen that video. Yeah. People who have donated money, they're now fighting and amongst themselves saying, oh, the monies that have been donated, where is it? Because apparently there was no... Well, I think these are just propaganda. Mm -hmm. Because if you I follow... So. If, you fo Uti, if you follow those people, right, on their page, they yeah. have daily... Daily, what's it called? Breakdown, okay. exactly. daily so updates. So, like so who is kind of propagating this? Arguments. And You're I think missing the wood for the trees. Yes, yeah, so, and yes, I we think we all need to be accountable. But I, I, I had this conversation where I said, look, we are all culpable in the Nigeria of today. You, I, who are all of us, we are complicit in the Nigeria of today. Whether it is by our action or our inaction, we all are complicit. So we must now all come together without division to fight for change. So if there are a few who are the leadership, who are a very small number, minute number compared to this number of people in this country, if they refuse to listen, then we will make them listen. Okay, so Uti, so that we are not, we are not talking around circles, right? So what is it that we should be looking out for if we have Esther back on? Because I want a situation where, because it seems like everybody is running away from being the face. I mean, it took us a long time to be able to get people to even speak to us today about this protest that is ongoing. So everybody, everybody seems to be pushing away the idea that, no, I am the face behind this protest. At some point, we need to put a structure to this protest. So we are able to clearly, you know... Wow. Um, I, I understand that strategy of a silent, what they call a noiseless effect, where we started with the NSAS and we're now slowly integrating it into the core issues of, that is going on in the country, like the educational stru structure, the uh, National Assembly, their salaries. We are integrating it gradually, slowly, and all of that. But we need a structure that, we say, that would say, you know what, mm -hmm. we know this is the blueprint, this is the plan. So if they do this, if they do that, this is where we are headed towards. Because now it seems like everybody's scattered. Oh, this person comes out to say, oh, nine for nine. This one says seven for seven. This one says five for five, you know? So where are we, you know, well, when are we going to put a structure to this? Well, I think that also you, you, you should also take note of the forces that want to divide us. Now, most of these things, you had one news today about the trailer news and you were trying to come, you know, correct me about what really happened is propaganda. There will be people that will try to divide us and that will try to make sure that this process does not succeed. Now, I understand, I, will, I would say I understand why there is no faith. Mm -hmm. Because by the time one person stands up and they call themselves the leaders, you would see how this would change. Mm -hmm. It will now be a personal attack on whoever that person is. Mm. So I think it's also another strategy that's working. So there is nobody you're talking to. There's no one that you're attacking. But wow, I would want to believe that there's something that is coordinating this movement. Mm -hmm. And right now, if we look at it, they seem to know what they're doing and they seem to be moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Let us... That's why, they, let, that's why they claim that they do not have a structure. Yes. All right, so we have more claims. comments on, uh, on WhatsApp. I'll take one. Uti, I think you have some with you. Um, Rolake says, the protest cannot go, cannot go smoothly without some people sponsoring division so we have to stay focused, focused. that's from rolake and someone says um that's eunice she says we all saw what happened with paystack a homegrown co uh, company by nigerians there are possibilities in nigeria we have to fight harder that's from uh, from eunice everybody seems to be together on this fight you know we are all claiming it that we 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 it's we, we you know we because it's, it's affecting you it's affecting it's me. affecting everybody so it's, it's affecting all, everybody so the sad reality of this thing is you know even when i was tr trying to talk to my sons you know, recently, and I started hearing myself say some of the things that my parents said to me. You know, that day actually broke me up. But we've not answered this question. Are we truly awake? You know, is this our time? Is now, is, is, is it, are we, are we there? Are we, well, I'm still wondering why you're asking this question because I know that we've because, had, you know, I know we've had protests, but this is the protest like no other. True. This is a protest that does not know your ethnic group. Mm. A protest that does not know your religious background. A protest that does not know your educational background. It is a unified front. I have never seen or heard that Nigerians united this well. Mm. And I will tell you one thing that I said to you earlier. that I think that COVID prepared us for this. You know, COVID, thanks to COVID. <laughs> COVID prepared a background where we had started working from home. Mm. Protect, prepare the background where we can conduct businesses without physically being there. Mm. Provided the background where we, most of us have now translated online and are doing things online. So thanks to COVID, because imagine 
that we had not put the structures in place. It would be very difficult for someone, people that are working, to still be actively involved. Absolutely. In the I process. think you said you had a question for um, Esther. Esther is back. I hear she's back. Okay. Esther, are you there? Go ahead. Okay, so there's, there's one question because um, I, I really wanted to ask because I've seen that there are some interested parties that are coming to want to hijack this protest. So how are we protest, protecting the protest from being hijacked? Especially from your front. Um, actually, we're trying our best. Uh, as you know, as you guys know, um, we didn't really plan this all through. We're just doing this at his go and it's bigger than anybody right now. It's actually bigger than anybody. And it's surprising to see Nigerians come together like this. And you're right, they've been, who, who, we've, we've, been attacked, we've been attacked by hoodlums. And everybody, is some people that have tried to hijack this protest too for their own benefit or because they paid them to. We are trying our best not to let those kind of things hinder what we are fighting for because I think we will never get a chance like this. The whole world is watching. Nigerians have come, for the first time, Nigerian youth have come together for something that is even bigger than us. We are not just doing this for Nigeria. We're doing it for the whole of Africa. We are doing it for our brothers and our sisters that are out there. If we can't be safe in our home, do you think we are safe anywhere else? Mm -hmm. So this is actually bigger than us. And as you say, of course, there will be people that will try to come, but we are together. And one, one beautiful thing that you need to do, one beautiful thing that you need to do is that we, we, we surpass through everything easily. Mm. We get attacked. Even our, attack, even our attackers are taken to a hospital by us and we contribute money to pay for their, for their hospital bill. Mm. And later I mean, they join must, us too because you must applaud the Nigerian for. youth. I saw the Lekki Toe guys cleaning up after the. I mean, we've shown that we truly are exemplary leaders, mm. you know. So let me quickly call exactly. for um, Pastor Itwa's video because I saw him. He came to the rally um, ground, you know, to come and, you know, speak, address the protesters. It would be nice to hear what he had to say, yeah. To the young people, I'm saying that you've done well, you have tried. You've come out, I appreciate your boldness and I appreciate your courage and your ability to speak. What we've been hoping God for, for Nigeria, is the people that have a voice and they're ready to speak. Now, I want government to listen, okay? This is not a condemnation of government, but this is a request from the people that you are governing that these are the things that we want. So government, please listen to the people, listen to them very, very well, hear what they're saying, sit with them around a table, hear what they are asking for, and please government, do your best to do what is good for the generality of Nigerians. Uh, the Sheikh of Dubai, Sheikh Al Maktoum, he says the job of a government is to make its people happy. He says, I want my people to be happy. The job of every government is to make sure that the generality of people, the majority of people, are happy. And Nigerians deserve to have hope. They need to be encouraged and they need to be happy. Okay, so based on what he said, right, Esther, if you can hear me, I also would like to hear Uti's input and Akanimo's input. How do you think we can now get to sit down on that round table in one minute each? Let me give Esther the floor first. Um, as, you, as you said, um, uh, I think the best thing to do, because we don't have leader. They killed our leader. Our leader is Jumo Ishak, the boy they shot in Obomo. So that's our leader. So unfortunately, it will be a bit hard. But the one thing they can do is that we don't need a round table. What we need is a town hall meeting. Mm. Mm is a town hall meeting to really, for, for, for this to really be sorted out. Every, represent, every representative of every corner of this country needs to be heard. Mm. Because as, as you guys said earlier, the hashtag keeps growing, end SARS, end SWAT, end police brutality, reform police. We're always still fighting for the police officers because now we're saying they should increase their salaries yeah. and they should provide them all the psychological help and health help they will need. So a town hall meeting to hear us out will be a big start. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. Thank you so much. Uti, quickly. Yeah, so for me, like I said, move swiftly. The government needs to show us right now that they're listening and they're taking us seriously. 
There are some big, you know, in business, we'll call them low hanging fruit. There's so many things that the government can do right now to show us that they are serious about this. It's not when we cry and we force and now some places are coming out with a few police officers to say this is who it is. We need, there's so much evidence out there. The government needs to take action that we can see. I don't understand, like I said at the beginning of the show, why the IGP is still in power. Mm. Just on the symbolism of it, why he is still in office, I don't know. It, the government needs to do something right now to get the people to understand that, look, we hear you, we get it. At that point, then I can say, okay, let's give them time. But the arrogance of the government is, oh, no, let's just keep trying to sweep it under the rug. Let's keep trying. So even when if they're they well tired, they will stop. In everything that Governor Sonwolu has mm. done, it's, it's, it seems like it's well-meaning, but it's not being taken well. Mm. All right. A.K., quickly. I like the idea of the town hall meeting. There's nothing stopping the president of this country coming out and addressing us and having a conference with youth. There mm. is nothing wrong with that. The fact that they had to wait till um, yesterday for the IGP to say no police should harass anybody. It's just too late. Mm -hmm. Build trust. With everything that you do, we're watching, we're looking. Build trust. Do the right things. They have been um, conditions and things. Meet them. If you are going to um, say you want to rehabilitate, but show us evidence. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with very smart people. According to the colloquial, regard us. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Regard us. And regard us by your actions. If you say you're going to do something, say it differently from the way you said it two years ago. We have your records. If you put it on the internet, it stays there forever. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way AK has summed it up. You know, I'll just say to the government, you know, reiterating what everybody has said, I hope you're listening. And the truth is, you might take this lightly that, oh, it will pass. They will be tired. And from what I saw on ground today and what I've been seeing, online, you know, everywhere. People are not tired. What we are tired of is bad governance. And if you want to show us a sign that we are, you, we matter to you, the, the life of every Nigerian matter to you, then you start to take us seriously by taking off, like Uti rightly said, the low hanging fruits, start to take them off and let mm -hmm. us start to see quick actions being taken, not just it, um, audio. I, I've learned so many slangs. Yes, this not period. audio. Not just audio. I think we, 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 we have a good way to wrap it up. Our, our Nigerians youth awake? The Nigerian youth, are, are we awake? The answer are woke. is yes, we are awake, you know, and we're hoping that we stay woke, you know, <laughs> and we, fight, we find lasting solutions to a new Nigeria. That's my vision. That's my dream. All right, so thank you so much, everyone, for watching, and thank you, ladies, for doing this with me. Thank you, Esther, for joining us. Now, please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been very insightful, and uh, keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Way to Africa 1 or at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. There may be times when we are powerless to prevent injustice, but there must never be a time when we fail to protest. We'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening.